Hello friends, Pastor Jesse here, Pequot Evangelical Church in Lancaster County, Pennsylvania, where we exist to help you know and follow Jesus. One of the ways that we do that is we encourage you and we attempt to equip you to be in God's word daily, to study God's word for yourself. The reason we do this is because Jesus himself tells us that the best way to know him and bear fruit in him is to have his word tucked away in our hearts. So we do that by reading uh, chapters of scripture together. We share an insight or two at the end of it, and then we go about our days with God's word in our hearts. And as we do that, the more and more that we do that, the more the fruit of Jesus Christ, his love and his grace that will be evident in our lives. Right now, because on Sunday mornings during our nine o'clock worship time, we are in the books of first, second, and third John. We're reading through those three letters written by the apostle John. Uh, right now we're at the end of first John. We're at chapter five of first John. We're going to read that this powerful challenge to keep the Lord Jesus Christ, to keep God our Father at the forefront and the foremost important thing in our lives. So open your hearts up, open your Bibles up to 1 John chapter 5. I'll be reading from the NIV, the New International Version. You can follow along or just listen to God's word as we read. Everyone who believes that Jesus is the Christ is born of God and everyone who loves the Father loves his child as well. This is how we know that we love the children of God, by loving God and carrying out his commands. In fact, this is love for God to keep his commands. And his commands are not burdensome, for everyone born of God overcomes the world. This is the victory that has overcome the world, even our faith. Who is it that overcomes the world? Only the one who believes that Jesus is the Son of God. This is the one who came by water and blood, Jesus Christ. He did not come by water only, but by water and blood. And it is the Spirit who testifies, because the Spirit, it is truth. For there are three that testify. There's the Spirit, the water, and the blood. And the three are in agreement. We accept human testimony, but God's testimony is greater because it is the testimony of God which he has given about his Son. Whoever believes in the Son accepts his testimony. Whoever does not believe God has made him out to be a liar because they have not believed the testimony of God that God has given about his Son. And this is the testimony. God has given us eternal life, and this life is in his Son. Whoever has the Son has life. Whoever does not have the Son of God does not have life. I write these things to you who believe in the name of the Son of God, that you may know that you have eternal life. This is the confidence we have in approaching God, that if we ask anything according to his will, he hears us. And if we know that he hears us, whatever we ask, we know that we have what we ask for. If you see any brother or sister commit a sin that does not lead to death, you should pray and God will give them life. I refer to those whose sin does not lead to death. There is a sin that leads to death. I'm not saying that you should pray about that. All wrongdoing is sin, and there is sin that does not lead to death. We know that anyone born of God does not continue to sin. The one who was born of God keeps them safe, and the evil one cannot harm them. We know that we are children of God, and the whole world is under the control of the evil one. We know also that the Son of God has come and has given us understanding so that we may know him who is true. And we are in him who is true by being in his Son, Jesus Christ. He is the true God, and he is the eternal life. Verse 21. Dear children, Keep yourselves from idols. This is the word of the Lord. This is 1 John chapter 5. This is 1 John as a whole now in our series. And here we see, I want to point out two very clear realities. First, we see that Jesus Christ, no matter how we spin it, no matter how we try to sway it, no matter how we try to twist and turn, Jesus Christ is in fact the one and only path of salvation. John is incredibly clear here. John is incredibly clear in his gospel that Jesus Christ is the way, the truth, and the life. As he says here, he is the only path to eternal life. He is God's son. God has testified that Jesus Christ is his son whom he loves. He is the only path to God. So there is no other way. There is a narrow road that leads to life, eternal life, and that is Jesus Christ. There's a wide road that leads any number of other evil and fallen places, but there's a narrow road that leads to life, and there's a narrow road that leads to God, and that is Jesus Christ and Jesus Christ alone. That's insight number one. And then the other reality is this, this reality of turning from sin, sins that lead to life and sins that lead to death. John summarizes it beautifully and very clearly in the final verse of the book. He says, dear children, keep yourselves from idols, right? What is an idol? Idol is not just a wood or a gold statue. An idol is anything that we place in our hearts in the place that God has. Anything that we place in our lives at the place, at the forefront place of our lives, as the center of our lives that God should have. So John summarizes the entire book. He summarizes all of our walks with the Lord in this life and all of our repenting and turning from sin and turning to God and following him by saying, just keep yourself from idols. 
right? Keep God where he should be. Keep God on the throne. Keep God at the center. Keep God as the foremost and the most important thing in your life. Have no other idols, no other items in front of him and keep God at the center and, and you'll do all right, right? Right? John says elsewhere that, that we will fall short of this goal of keeping idols, but God is faithful. Jesus is faithful to forgive a multitude of sins. But if we go through our lives doing everything that we can to keep the God at the center of our lives, we're going to do all right. And we will hear at the end of our lives, well done, good and faithful servant. So I thank you for joining us today as we read through the gospel of 1 John or the book of 1 John. Next time we'll be in uh, 2 John, which is just a one chapter book, powerful little book. And we'll conclude with 3 John, which is another one chapter book. Excited to join with you and continue to study God's word. Until then, may God bless.